The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The more I see of the human species, the more surprised I become and the less I seem to understand it. Take a young man, good education, fine family, and for no reason you can see, he goes wrong. You say to yourself, had he only used the brilliance he was endowed with, there's nothing worthwhile he couldn't accomplish. But something in his nature made him turn to a life of crime. This is the puzzle and the mystery of Michael Emerson. I'm afraid all the kid will get is a three- to five-year probationary sentence. I can't believe that. He ran his car right into my folks and killed them. I don't like it either, Mr. Emerson. Legal or not, I think it is an abuse of the youthful offender law. It's hard for me to believe that that punk who killed my father and my mother, all he'll be charged with is stealing a car and driving without a license. He ought to get life. <laughs> mystery drama, King Bank Robber, adapted from police files, was dramatized especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis and stars Mason Adams. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I don't want to give away too much of this extraordinary story, but the young man we call Michael Emerson, and by the way, that's not his real name, pulled more bank jobs, cracked more safes, planned more escapades, and made off with more loot than any other bank robber in American history. His total take in some seven years from banks in New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, Baltimore, Boston, and points in between was over $20 million. Come to think of it, now that I look back, I never had a run-in with the police or trouble with the law until after I graduated from college. I never had any kind of problems to speak of. Of course, when you're at Emerson, my dad was David Emerson, the David Emerson of Emerson Industries. My mother was a Cunningham. She had almost more money than dad did. Well, when you're at Emerson, your life, your life really is a breeze. No sweat. Well, it's easy going. Ivy League college guys with good marks, a master's in architecture. I didn't have an enemy in the world. That is, until that night, my mother and father were driving home from a weekend on the island and... By the time the ambulance got there, it was all over. There wasn't enough left of either of them to put back together. Ah, what was I saying? Oh, yes, about enemies. I, uh... A talk that I had with Detective Sergeant Sam Horton after the funeral. No, hold on, Mr. Emerson. Just, just you hold on. Are you telling me, Sergeant, that you aren't going to throw the book at this kid? We'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll charge him for what he's done. Taking the lives of two innocent people with a stolen car. I don't know that the death of your parents warrants a murder charge. Here, look, let me explain it to you. This boy is 18. He's had three arrests on robbery and theft charges since he was 16. Now, up to now, he hasn't committed any Class A felonies, murder or kidnapping. He sure has now. Now, just you hold it, sir. Now, any offender between the ages of 16 and 19 is classified as a youthful offender under the law. Now, there's been extensive plea bargaining in his previous arrests, and I would guess the court will continue the boy's youthful offender status, and he'll probably get three to five years probationary sentence. I can't believe that. He ran that car right into my folks and killed them, and he gets three to five years. I'll, uh, tell you off the record. Well, that kind of sentence is legal. I think it's an abuse of the youthful offender law. You keep saying law as though it was the holy writ. For us, it is. That's justice. 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 That's hard to believe. All that punk will be charged with is car stealing and driving without a license. Now, you see, these judges, they, uh, they feel they're showing compassion. You know, it deprived the youngster of a broken home and accident. Are these the laws we live by? A hopped-up kid loose on the street slaughters whoever gets in his way, and all he gets is a slap on the wrist? Well, it's not quite like that. Sergeant, do you, do you, do you know what judge is going to be presiding? Uh, no, sir, we can't tell you. Well, I'll be in that courtroom, whoever it is. 
30 days later, I stood in the courtroom and heard Judge Hiram Garrity sentence that young murderer to a mere few years in the reformatory. Judge Garrity. My mother had been a friend of his wife's, too. We used to go to the Paris dress showings together. Believe me, I changed a great deal during those few minutes in that courtroom. If the law was that unjust, if the law was a friend of the criminal, then I would become the enemy of the law. Here, yeah, hello, Michael. Hey, come on over. <laughs> well, what brings you to the VIP club? Hello, Mr. Favish. Well, sir, this famous old club hasn't exactly been a bailiwick of mine, but I thought it was a favorite of Dad, so, well... I figured I'd stop by and get acquainted. Maybe maybe even become a member. Oh, my dear boy. I can't begin to tell you how sorry I am that he and your mother should have come to such a tragic end. Did they uh, get the man who ran into them? Oh, yes, yes, they did. An 18-year-old in a stolen car. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Hiram Garrity was telling me. He's a member here. Yes. And it was his case. Yes, yes. Well, I... If you don't mind, I, I really don't want to talk about it anymore. You don't mind, I do. Uh, no. Forgive me, Michael. Eh, it was insensitive of it's me. It's all right, it's all right. I've learned a lot about the world lately, Mr. Faversham. It's laws, it's justice. Yeah, well, uh, what are you going to do with yourself, my boy? You're all graduate in uh, architecture, aren't you? What? I don't really of, uh... know what I'm going to do. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll take up banking. Oh, that would please me enormously. You know, your father and I were very old friends. He went into industry, and I went into banking. <laughs> I'm sure there are lots of positions that I could uh, put you away in our bank. Well, it's a question of what I feel I could contribute to Mr. Faversham. Architecture being my line, I was thinking of doing a book on various business institutions, mm -hmm. a study of their design. Mm -hmm. Is their layout conducive to optimum product? Is the space utilized properly? Traffic flow and so forth. Yeah, well, it sounds interesting. Matter of fact, it occurs to me, Mr. Faversham, if, if, if you could let me have the blueprints of your bank, I might just begin on that. Why, I'm delighted to, Michael. I'll have them sent to you. Uh, you're still living at Fifth Avenue? Oh, yes, I'll never give that house up. My grandfather built it. I guess it's the only pure Italian Renaissance building in the city. Well, I'm wondering, Michael, it's a bit of a mausoleum for a young man like yourself to be rattling around in, but I can understand you're not wishing to move right now. Hard work will be the answer, Mr. Faversham. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to getting those blueprints. It uh, just crossed my mind. You must be familiar with my bank, the Manhattan National Savings Bank. It also looks uh, a little renaissance on the outside. Yeah, you needn't, you needn't send me any exterior elevations. Just the floor plans of the bank will do. People have the idea that the rich and social only know the rich and social. Fact is, when you have money and influence, you can get to know anyone. You can buy anyone. It uh, didn't take me long to find two professional safe crackers. <laughs> you heard me right. Safe crack. We, we met on the Lower East Side, on the waterfront. A good place to talk if you don't want to be overheard. Gentlemen, I'm glad to meet you. I'm Michael Emerson. Hi, Mr. Emerson. I'm Red Wilson. This is Johnny Harris. Hiya. Now, before we begin, I'm giving you each a thousand dollars in cash just to show my good faith. When we do the job that I have in mind and split three ways, you credit me with your advance, all right? Fair enough. Thanks. Hey, you're grand. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Emerson, you sound like what you've uh, got in mind is pretty big time. Yes, well, I, I, I have the plans, but right now I also have a lot to learn. You got tools? You tell me where to get them. What do I need? Well, to start off with, a jimmy bar. You know, nail puller one end, bill on the other. Heavy duty, real strong. So you can rack on them, beat with them. Uh, that's what you need to get into a building. Uh, unless you're going to roof it, then you need roofing tools. My plan is to get one of you a job as a porter in the building. And that man lets us in. A warehouse? A bank. No kidding, Mr. Emerson. You can do that? Now, one of you two will be the lookout. And the second man will help me with the vault. Well, then you need tools to punch with. Yeah, what about a pneumatic drill? Charlie, will you let me... Tools to punch? You mean to blow the safe open? Ah, uh, we never use nitro if we can help it. If you're caught with it in your car, they got a heavy law against that. Now, when you punch a safe, you knock the dial off. You see, there's a pin inside, and that holds the tumblers in position. Knock that pin, the tumblers take a tumble, presto, 
the door opens. That easy? Right, you're out of it. I haven't had a punchable safe in years. You see, Mr. Emerson, they weld the plate now in the back. You try and punch that pin through the plate, you'll mushroom out and block the tumblers. Of course, if the box is the right kind, you could peel it. Yeah, you could. You should. Hey, explain, gentlemen. Oh, you peel the box like a can of sardines if you got no key. You take a big coat chisel at the corner of the door and you whip it. Your safe door, it's, it's heavy, but it ain't solid, see? It's hollow, asbestos, fireproof stuff inside. Now, some safes got more steel than others. Depends what make. So, you just drive your cold chisel under this quarter-inch layer and pry it loose. If you got a good start, you're home free. I once tackled an L.C. hall. I whipped it for 12 hours. It never did beat us. Gentlemen, perhaps I didn't make it clear. We're not tackling somebody's drugstore or a jewelry store. I'm aiming for the Manhattan National Savings Bank down on Wall Street. And what we're going to do is crack their vault. Hey. Mr. Emerson, you don't do that with no drill. You gotta have the combination or at least know what type of lock like the back of your hand. You gotta know your bank layout real good to try that. Mr. Harris, Mr. Wilson, that is precisely the way I aim to tackle it. So if you're game, we're partners. You bet. Sold. Come tomorrow morning to where I live. I've written the address on this car. Ah. Fifth yeah. Avenue. You live there? Come around to the side street, the service entrance, 7 a.m. I'll be waiting for you. Good morning, gentlemen. Come on in. Follow me. Hey, <laughs> you look at this. An elevator. Hey, well, watch the door. Uh, there's room for yeah. the three of us. What do you think of this, Red? This guy's got his own private elevator and his own private house. Hey, pretty nifty. Let's take us to the top floor. And, and, and it's all yours, Mr. Emerson? Yeah, uh -huh, that's right. Every floor. I don't get it. If you're rich enough to live like this, uh, what do you want to pull a bank job for? Uh, Mr. Wilson, that's my own private affair. Oh. Huh. Here we are, gentlemen. Welcome to the Michael Emerson branch of the Manhattan National Savings Bank. Son of a gun. Wow. Will you look at that? Hey, is this for real? I mean, it looks real. You might uh, call it a stage set. I've had this whole floor made to look exactly like the bank we're going to rob. What began as a personal vendetta against the law seems to be gathering a momentum of its own. There's more to this than an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The death of Michael's parents may have pulled the trigger, but I wonder, would this wealthy young socialite have turned against society anyway? What's behind all this? Let's see if there's an answer when I return shortly with Act Two. Imagine the top floor of a Fifth Avenue mansion converted into a replica of an actual bank that was going to be broken into. This method of duplicating the premises became the modus operandi Michael Emerson was to use in preparing scores of bank jobs. His master's degree in architecture certainly helped. You might say, in the annals of crime, Michael Emerson was the only college-trained bank robber. Red, I've never seen anything like this layout in my life. Look at the detail. Mr. Emerson, I sure got to hand it to you. What you see here is an exact copy of the Manhattan National's main office. That door leads to Wall Street. The teller's cage is over here. And through that space is the vault. Gentlemen, what we're going to do is to rehearse every move we will make to the split second so that we know the bank inside out. And we shall work on this all day, every day, till we're ready to take it. I uh, guess we'll be staying here with you, huh, Mr. Emerson? Absolutely. I hope we become fast friends, gentlemen. Well, when do you think you will pull this job? When you gentlemen tell me I'm ready. All right, let's go downstairs and have some breakfast. After that, I'm ready for my first lesson. I'm not going to bother you with the details. We rehearsed and rehearsed till we had every move down pat. I got read a job as a porter in the bank. Favisham was pleased he could do me the favor and place an old college professor down on his luck. And then, one weekend, we beat that vault in 25 hours, opened every safe deposit box they had, and they were floor to ceiling. 
And by Sunday night, we were back at my place with bulging suitcases. Who's got what? Well, these four suitcases have got all the safety pocket box stuff. The loose jewelry, the envelopes, it's all here. I've got the two suitcases full of bills. I think it uh, turned out uh, most satisfactory. <laughs> <laughs> may I say, gentlemen, in your language, which is getting more and more familiar to me, we made a pretty good score. Aces. Hey, let's start counting. Uh, gentlemen, all this is not going to run away. Let's relax. Mr. Emerson, if I may be permitted, I'd like to say, Charlie and me, we latched onto a genius. I've never seen anything the way you got that vault door open. He's an electrical genius, too. Yeah. The way he reset that clock. I appreciate the compliments, but opening a vault isn't hard when you know how. Let's leave all this right here. Go down to the library, sit in front of the fire, and toast our association with champagne. <laughs> Red and Charlie had better luck in transforming me into a professional bank robber than I had in making them into gentlemen. I opened the champagne to celebrate, but uh, they preferred beer. So be it. After a little food and a considerable drink, we decided to call it a night. We'd been on our feet 30 hours, and there was plenty of time to divvy up the next morning. Well, let's see. We got three piles here. Four. Four. Oh, yeah, that stuff marked Judge Garrity. How come of all the merchandise in the safe deposit boxes, you went for that? Call it a personal score to settle. As I understand it, when people deposit their valuables in a safe deposit box, they don't insure it. They think it's safe. Which it is from everybody but us. Is this Judge Garrity a friend of yours, Mr. Emerson? Are you going to give it back to oh, him? Oh, no. No, no. I'm making sure that he'll never see it again. And um, to my unpracticed eye, the judge's little nest egg consists of about $100,000 worth of diamonds. Too bad. Well, have you turned your, um, what you call unpracticed eye to the rest of this stuff? How do you figure it? I'll make a wild guess, a low figure. I'd say after we fence it, counting we get, say, 20% of the value, that's another $100,000. Mm -hmm. And the green? Uh, you got your fingers dirty, Mr. Harris. What did you make it? $844,375. Well, ho, ho, ho. so if you add the rocks and the cash, it's close to a million. That is the biggest score I ever made. You still can't add, Charlie. Counting the rocks, it's over a million. What are you going to do with yours, Mr. Wilson? Me? <laughs> Stop working. I may even retire. Me too. You know... Except for the times I was jugged, I ain't stopped working in 30 years. Well, I've only done this once, but it uh, doesn't seem extremely difficult to me. <laughs> oh, Mr. Emerson, don't kid yourself. Beating safes is hard work. There you are, sandwiched in some darn little office with this monster. Cooped up, sweating your head off. You got no idea, Mr. Emerson, how much physical energy goes into making that box. That's a fact. I put my heart and soul into peeling a box. Sometimes you get so darn tired you just have to lie on the floor to come to before you get out of there. Talk about being exhausted. And it's an emotional strain. Yeah, what Red said. Safe cracking ain't no fun. That's a living. But that's about all you can say for it. Oh, uh, what are you going to do with yours, Mr. Emerson? $300,000 extra spending money? Well, starting tomorrow, I'm going to plan a really big one. The biggest. No kidding, Fort Knox. Who oh, knows? <laughs> no. If it takes years, I'm going to do the biggest bank job in history. Mr. Emerson, whenever you're ready, you count on us, will you? I certainly will. Me too. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Likewise, I'm sure. Mr. Faversham? Uh, yes? Oh, are you Detective Sergeant Horton? Yes, sir. Well, it's been quite some time since we've heard from you police... Are you any closer to finding out who robbed the Manhattan National Savings Bank? Well, we have some leads, but I can't say we're close. Six months. It's a pretty long time, Sergeant. What have you done? Given up? No, no, no. No, 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 Mr. Faversham. We keep these robberies on our books for years. It isn't the currency or the securities, you understand. We're insured for that. But our safe deposit boxes were not. And our depositors look to us to protect the contents. They've taken the greatest loss. Most of our depositors were not insured. Now, has any of it been located? Uh, not, uh, no, sir, nothing, nothing. I'm afraid, sir, the likelihood of any of the missing jewelry turning up now is pretty remote. By now, everything's been broken up and sold. Well, then what in blazes brings you here? 
Well, the police are working on a theory that this could have been an inside job. There is no evidence of entry, any of the ease with which the vault was open. Is there, is there anyone on your staff, any officer who you might suspect? Someone who works here? Why, that's unthinkable. <laughs> it happens every day. Some disgruntled employee makes a deal with professional thieves. Yeah. We have reason to believe it, uh, a possibility. Because there have been a raft of similar bank robberies up and down the East Coast and quite a few of the big cities. Uh, there is some mastermind behind all this. A man who has access to information enabling him to uh, silence the alarms, you know, and so on. A uh, mastermind? Uh, yes, sir, at headquarters. They're calling him uh, the king of bank robbers, uh, whoever he is. Uh, no. No one, no one who would uh, fit into the disgruntled employee category. Uh, well, uh, who would have access to, say, uh, the blueprints of the layout of your bank? No one I can think of. Hmm. Well, how would you go about finding out uh, how to open your vault? Well... Only ourselves, myself, and uh, one or two other officers, and the manufacturer. Uh, I'd put questions to them if I were you. I can tell you this, Sergeant Horton. We're not at all happy with the firm our locks come from. Since we were robbed, those locks have not performed adequately. Uh, they didn't perform adequately before you were robbed, either. <laughs> uh, John, it uh, does make you stop and think. Yes, I had this detective sergeant over at the bank yesterday, and he says there's a rash of these robberies. All hit in the same way, Ralph. Mm. Well, that's exactly what I mean, John. It makes you re-examine all your security precautions, doesn't it? I know we've uh, taken a very careful look at our vault system at Merchant Savings. Uh, you read about Philly and Boston, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's next? They could get us again. Our locks aren't working right. And what are the police doing about it? <laughs> Theorizing, We at headquarters believe it's all the work of a king bank robber. Oh, uh, Michael. Uh, Michael Everson. <laughs> Over here, boy. Uh, hello, Mr. Faversham. Well, I haven't seen you in ages, my boy. How's everything going? Oh, this is Ralph Stanton, uh, Michael Emerson, uh, David Emerson's boy. Yes, well, I heard a lot about you, Michael. Your father and I were great friends. I, I miss him. That's right, Mr. Stanton. I remember you and Dad played golf every Sunday. Yes, yes, we sure did. But uh, we'd meet here at the VIP club during the week, too. Uh, you know. Ralph and I have just been bemoaning our lax police department. Six months since the robbery, and they still have no idea who did it. Millions stolen. That much? Uh, some of our safe deposit clients took it pretty hard. Oh, you heard about Judge Garrity, Ralph? Eh? Uh, no, 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 I didn't. Uh, one of our box holders. The thieves took everything. All his wife's jewelry, negotiable securities, practically his life savings. He uh, had a breakdown. Had to leave the bench. No uh, kidding. So you see, a robbery like this can affect many people quite severely. Uh, John, you uh, you should recommend to your board a perrier safe. You know, mm. They're absolutely the best. You know, uh, we carry on hand more actual cash than any other bank in the city. <laughs> we have to be protected. Well, I'm certainly not happy with ours right now. Get a perrier. Take it from me. What are you up to, Michael? Yes, uh... How's your book going? Oh, uh, Michael's an architectural graduate, and he's uh, making a survey of business establishments. Their layout, traffic flow charts, etc. Where are you now? Yeah, the purpose of the book is to demonstrate what can be done to increase productivity if you have optimum interior planning. I've had a lot of cooperation since I last saw you, Mr. Faversham. Practically every big business house. They all see the value. And, of course, those who are well-planned are sort of proud of it and uh, want to be included. But I'm afraid they're few and far between. <laughs> well, we loaned Michael our blueprints, and he's come up with some very good ideas. Oh, well, uh, have you uh, have you thought of our bank, Michael, the Merchant Savings? I have, yes, but yours is the biggest of all the city banks, and tell you the truth, I, I didn't have the nerve to ask you. <laughs> Why not? Shall I be frank? Well, you better be. Your dad always was. I don't think that you're utilizing your floor space efficiently. Not by a long shot. Oh, Inefficient, eh? Michael, could you undertake this privately for me? A, a survey, you know, recommendations uh, for the office of the president of the bank and uh, for his eyes only? Well, certainly, Mr. Stanton. I'd be glad to. Oh, well, uh, where do we begin? You begin by getting together all of your blueprints, uh, floor plans and so on, of the bank's interior. Right, Michael? Uh, yes, sir, as a start. Well, uh, what then? Well, 
Uh, I'd like to send over a colleague of mine, a very fine architect. You may have heard of him, Professor Wilson. He, he'd work with me. I'd have him take on-the-spot measurements. Well, send him along by all means. Oh, Ralph, you're not making a mistake. We can always learn from the young, right? Gentlemen, welcome back to the old homestead. Hey, we've been reading about that calling you King Bank Robber, Mr. Emerson. Red Charlie, it's nice to see the both of you again. Well, it's been a long time. Yeah, too long. You sure have been keeping busy, Mr. Emerson. Oh, yes, yes. I've spent a bit of time out of town. Yeah. Philly, Boston, Baltimore. I read how you uh, left quite a trail of open boxes. I would have sent for you, Mr. Wilson. You too, Mr. Harris. But I, I make it a practice of using the local. Like oh, sure. I understand that. Hey, uh, who we playing this time? Yeah. Emerson? Who do we score? Gentlemen, welcome to the Michael Emerson branch of the Merchant Savings Bank. Did you say merchants? They you put the biggest in town. You're not going to make that joint. Come have a look. Wow. Look a real that. vault. You got a whole vault door in your house. Uh, not a vault, Mr. Wilson. The vault. I bought this from the Perrier Company. It's identical with the one downtown at Merchant Savings. Just the door and the works. Well, how'd they sell it to you? I, I mean, you, you're a private citizen. You're no bank. Oh, but dear Mr. Harris, you forget that my father and mother had one of the most valuable art collections in the country. As their son, I had no difficulty in buying the best means to protect it. Pile up a stack of dominoes. Push one, the others will all fall. So also goes the game of life. An accident. Father and mother killed. A judge hands down a light sentence. A son turns against the rule of law and organizes bank robberies. The judge's safe deposit box is emptied. The judge is ruined. But Michael Emerson's jousts with justice do not stop there. More when we return shortly with Act Three. On the top floor of a Fifth Avenue mansion, three men are intent upon an intricate mechanism especially designed to thwart the cleverest of bank robbers, a Perrier vault door. Days go by, weeks. One of the men poses as a Professor Wilson, gains access to the actual bank, and notes any changes in layout. More time passes, three weeks, a month. Lunch, burgers and cokes. How's it going? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Emerson. Uh, uh, I think he's got it. Uh, Put the food over there, Johnny. Mm. 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 Ah. She's open. Great, great. Marvelous, you did it. You got the monster open. This is terrific. Uh, of course, we're not going to have three whole uninterrupted weeks inside the bank, but now I know what we did wrong and what we did right. Ah, uh, Charlie, what's this? I told you two burgers, medium rare. Both of these are well done. Well, that's what I asked for. You never get anything straight. Okay, take it easy, you two. Look, I offered you filet mignon downstairs. Now, that offer is still good. Well, I'm not used to that fancy food. Meaning no offense. I'll stick with these burgers. There's extra ketchup and pickles in the bag, Red. Thanks. You, uh, sure you won't have something, Mr. Emerson? I brought an extra tuna fish sandwich just in case. Thanks, no, Mr. Harris. I don't feel like eating now. I've got to measure exactly where I drilled that hole under the indicator. And what always makes me hungry? Yeah, will you, gentlemen, just hold the chatter for a minute? Uh, what I've got to remember is exactly how I've done it here. Every move. Well, gentlemen, I'm game for this Friday. How about you? Sooner the better. The other jobs, you know... The other jobs are easy. This one, time will tell. How's that? We got the hang of this lock in three weeks. All we've got now is a weekend. Friday came. We went in. Our inside man opened the back door. It's good and dark, just enough light coming from the street lamp outside. Red Wilson worked with me. Charlie Harris was lookout. You need help, Mr. Emerson? Uh, I got the hole pretty well started under the indicator. Wait a minute, I want to check how far I'm in. Hand me the steel wire. There's a cop coming down the street. Everybody freeze. He's still coming. Coming closer. Hey, what's that? The night lights have gone on. Hit before, everybody. It must be timed automatically to go on at midnight. 
you should have told us, a stupid fool. Hey, I'm standing over here by the window. The cops going to see me. Duck down. Crawl into the corner behind that big cardboard sign. Can you imagine? Jack's the inside man, and he don't tell us nothing. Mr. Harris, did you make it? Yeah, I'm right behind that sign. <laughs> You know what it says? Who cares? Low interest rates. Borrow from us. It's a steal. Oh, Charlie, you're too much. What do we do now? We wait till that cop has passed the window. Okay. Now let's arrange some of that furniture so we can work without being seen. Big couch by the window. We'll crawl over there and move that to the right. Mr. Harris, grab hold of your cardboard sign and ease it over to your left about a foot. This is like cracking a safe in the middle of Times Square. I think we can do it, Mr. Emerson. We'll give it a darn good try. We moved whatever furniture we could find, inch by inch. Had it staggered all the way across to the counter, so from outside it still looked all right, but it made a solid wall. Most of the time we just had to kneel behind it, working all that night, the next day, and the next night. It was slow going. Oh, uh, Mr. Harris, you want to take over? You bet. Nice and clean. Nice and clean. Oh, well, it's flat on your stomach. I tell you, two days like this is a little nervous making. Why not? There's a little more than 5,000 in this wall. I'm through the plate, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Ah, you're a good man, John. Let me see. It's just after midnight. We have 24 hours. We ought to be out of here by Sunday midnight. <laughs> By midnight Sunday, we worked around the clock, all of us did, taking turns, snaking a hair-like piece of steel through the drilled hole. According to my calculations, I'd lined up the notches in the tumblers, but somehow we just couldn't get them to fall right. Monday morning was getting close. I give up. My arm's stiff. My knee's going to sleep. Let me have another go on. Here, hand me that steel wire. I know which tumbler's holding plaque. I can feel it. No matter how I poke, she won't move. It's starting daylight. What do we do? Better wrap it up. Move all the furniture back where it was and roll up the tools. You giving up? I sure I'm not. I'll putty up this hole and we'll be back here tonight. Should I leave a note for Jack? A uh, note? Charlie, are you kidding? You might as well chalk. We'll be back right here on the floor. Who are you calling, Mr. Wilson? Jack, our inside man. He's usually home by six. I want to make sure that everything's clear for tonight. Hello. Um... Is this the Fulton Fish Market? Who wants to know? Well, I'd like to order three pounds of herring for a special party tonight. Can you deliver? For tonight, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I see. You have uh, problems getting herring, huh? I'd say it's not safe to eat any fish for the next few days. That's your professional advice, is it? Yep. Too many sharks. Makes fishing too great a risk. Uh, I tell you, try us on Friday. That's usually a good day. Oh, of course, sure, I forgot. Friday's always a good day for fish. Mr. Emerson? Yes? I just spoke to Jack. He says no for tonight. The bank's found something wrong with the safe. He says, try Friday. I must have discovered where I plugged up the hole. I'd better get some details. Hey, uh, Michael, uh, come on in. What brings you to the bank? Oh, yes, of course, I know. John Faverson told you. Uh, as a matter of fact... Well, we're keeping it all very quiet. It's the kind of publicity no bank wants to have. You know, funny, I was talking to John this morning, and I told him we were lucky they couldn't get the vault door open. And that is the advantage of a Perry or lock combination. So whoever it was... Got nothing. Yes, we've installed a new lock plate, and as soon as it's possible, we'll uh, put in a completely new unit. Lock plate? I'm mm-hmm. afraid I don't understand. Yeah, well, never mind. Uh, what it does is jam the tumblers once and for all. So you folks can't use the vault, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Until we install a new unit, we can't get it open. <laughs> but nobody else can either. Yes, well, <clears throat> now, what brings you down here? Well, nothing, really. I just happened to be downtown. I thought I'd stop by and thank you for all the help you've been on my architectural project. Well, I, uh, I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to study your recommendations yet, Michael. Well, I know very well that I never could have gotten as far as I did if it hadn't been for you. So we waited until Friday. I knew there was only one way to open that vault... But I decided to use it. Wow. <coughs> that does it. Wow. That just shows you. You could dynamite the Statue of Liberty and no one would pay me attention. Miss Charlie. 
Red and I go inside the vault. <coughs> when the smoke clears... Yeah, we'll fill the suitcases and, and, and push them out here to you. And you know what to do. <coughs> you pile the suitcases in one place as we fill them. Where do you want them? Uh, uh, we we'll stick them behind that cardboard sign. The one that says, borrow from us, it's a steal. We did it. Three million dollars. The biggest haul in safe-cracking history. But where do we go from there? I proved I could do it. Make a monkey out of the law. So, I retired. Of course, I kept my hand in as a consultant to other bank robbers. They pay me a fee for advice and planning. But King Bank Robber was no more. Michael Emerson, he still lived, and you could find him at the VIP club mingling with the best people. My old partners, Mr. Wilson and Mr. Harris, I lost track of them. But one person didn't. Detective Sergeant Sam Horton. Oh, Officer Carmen, the, uh, bring in the prisoner. <laughs> well, 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 if it isn't Charlie Harris. I don't think we've met before. Huh, huh? Well, uh, let me introduce myself. Detective Sergeant Horton. Well, Charlie, you used to be a lot smarter. What happened? I was never very good at school. Kind of dumb. Hmm, well, according to what it says here, Charlie... Uh, you were caught with your fingers in the cookie jar at the uh, City Grand Trust of National. No kidding. I was? Oh, Charlie, you don't have to play dumb if you are dumb. I was badly advised. Uh, I sure think you were, Charlie. You shouldn't listen to everything uh, the king tells you to do. Who? King bank robber. Never heard him. Oh, <laughs> Charlie. Dumb, dumb, dumb. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard him. Yeah, and you work with him, too. Now, I'll tell you how I know. You use a lot of tricks only he used on his jobs. But your problem, Charlie, is that you weren't tricky enough. I didn't come here to be insulted. So tell me, where did you get the ideas on how to crack city grant? Out of my own head. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what I think. I think you're going to get 20 years. 20 years? Mm -hmm. I ain't going to live that long. Oh, you could, Charlie. And I'm going to level with you. You're a small potato. Doesn't do me any good to put you in the oven when the uh, big potato's still around. So what I'm offering you, Charlie, is my cooperation when it comes to plea bargaining time in return for yours. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. It's me I'm talking about. And all because Detective Sergeant Sam Horton was a wee bit smarter than I was. He got Charlie Harris to put the finger on me. Then after the police dug around some up on the top floor of the house and found a whole set of tools I'd forgotten to throw out and talked to witnesses, they had a good case. Just before I went up to serve my time, I had a visitor. Hello, my own. I had a dream about you last night, Sergeant. It was like the first time we met, remember? Mm -hmm. Well, I remember a young man who came to see me about seven years ago. Maybe I'm a little to blame for what happened to him. I couldn't give him the answers he wanted to hear. I did start out to revenge myself against the law. But I didn't quite make it. Seven years ago, you told me the law was soft. I was wrong. You have to learn that. The story of Michael Emerson... Does it have a meaning? Does it add up? Is the answer taking the law into your own hands? Is your way the right way? Fight fire with fire, they say. But will it ever put out the flame? Think about that. And I'll be back shortly. The more I delve into the case histories of the men who commit crimes, the more I hear it's all someone else's fault. Every man in prison is innocent. Every convict was railroaded. Every law is unjust. The law has been built to protect everyone. Like a water dam, just one little hairline crack and, well, I don't have to tell you what might happen. A little pressure and the whole structure could give way. Our cast included Mason Adams, Earl Hammond, Ray Owens, and Jackson Beck. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown.
This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.